Hi, welcome to video three where we're going to finish up the poster and talk about some other references for your project. Okay, getting back to Illustrator, um, we've been drop, dragging and dropping um, our assets into our um, poster file and also um, using the file place command which gives you a little more control uh, when you're initially placing it. Um, let's talk a little bit about uh, text before we go any further. Text is really important. It's pretty simple if you remember a couple of things. The first thing I'm going to do, of course, is make my text layer current. There's two basic ways of placing text. Uh, actually, the tool is called the type tool. It looks like a letter T. I'm just going to select that tool once, and I'm going to demonstrate the two basic kinds of type or text that you enter in Illustrator. One of them is called point text. And to enter point text, I just click a point once and I can start typing. When you're done, you can't use the shortcut V because you're in the middle of placing text. It would type the letter V, so you have to go and select the cursor. It's very small, but I'll adjust that later. The other type of uh, type is called paragraph type. And I'm going to use the same command, but instead of just clicking a point, I'm going to click and drag a rectangle that describes what I think the paragraph shape uh, might want to be. And you can see it fills it with some placeholder text. I'm a terrible typist. Okay, I'm back to select the selection cursor. Um, with a piece of text selected, you can see that my um, context sensitive menu shows me different options, such as the font being used, um, the subtype of the font, and of course the size of the font. I'm going to ramp up the size so you can see the um, text more clearly. And let's just get these two so they're kind of comparable. So this is, um, I like even numbers. <clears throat> we'll make that 74 point, and we'll make this 74 point. Okay, now at first glance, they look the same. Let's make these color white. Notice I'm changing the fill color on text. Don't give your text outlines. Hardly ever a good idea to give your text outlines. You can do it but it really uh, messes things up. Um, it, it makes it less legible and it's just, it's not done. So no outlines and when you're changing the color of text, you're changing the fill color. So these look um, very similar, but here's the difference. With point text, if I need to adjust it um, and I try and just grab its bounding box and stretch it, you see what happens, the text itself warps. Whereas with paragraph text, what happens is that it wraps, like you sort of expect or text to do. Now you don't see it so much on a short um, phrase, so I'm going to copy this onto itself, and you can see um, how the paragraph wraps a little better. So there's not really um, a lot of reason why you would choose point text unless you wanted to quickly warp it or something like that. But there's better ways of changing uh, the, the characteristics of a piece of text than doing that. This is rather crude. There's other tools within here that you could get the same effect um, in, in, in a better way with more control than just eyeballing it. So point text, paragraph text. Paragraph text wraps, point text does not. Uh, I would say default to paragraph text. It's going to give you a lot more flexibility. So let's go ahead and place some text. I'm thinking I might need a little caption for each of my pictures here. So with the text layer current, well, let's delete this first. I'm going to start the type tool again. And I'm going to drag a rectangle uh, where I might place text that explains these quantitative graphics. Um, I'm in the middle of a text command. I'm just going to use some dummy text. I didn't actually do a project on this. So I'm just going to um, copy paste some um, dummy text from another Word document. 
Um, here's a neat thing about, um, obviously we can see this is too big for, for a, uh, a description of that text. How big should text be? That's a very interesting question. Um, I said posters should operate on three levels, from halfway across the room, from four or five feet away, and up close inspection. This would be the finest of the fine print, but how big should it be? There's no hard and fast rule as to how big to make text. Text is abstract. Um, it's either legible or it's not, and we know when it's not. Um, so you can use as a guide uh, perhaps something that you're familiar with, like Microsoft Word. I think the default font size in Microsoft Word is like 11. Keep in mind that's on a small page. So if I start out at like a 12, um, and that's that's probably as small as I'm willing to go, I'll start there, and I'll, I'll definitely do a sort of a draft print before I would send this to the final um, printer, and check things like text size. It's actually really important. It's the difference a lot of times between something that looks finished and professional and something that doesn't. Text takes up an inordinate amount of time in any page layout. The images are easy. Once they're done, they're there. But the text has to tell the story. For example, on these two graphs, they came from two different sources. The text on all the axes should be the same size on the poster. Now, I can't do that right now because I just grabbed these from wherever. But if I was doing a project for real, you have to look ahead to, to how it's going to be used before it prints and make sure your text is the same size. It looks very bad when you have two different graphs. One of them has tiny text, one of them has oversized text because you scaled the whole thing to fit on a poster. Tricky and time consuming, extremely time consuming. So here is my um, uh, caption for these uh, charts. And it's on, it's on the layered text. I don't want to get too much into the, I can't get too in detail uh, with anything I'm showing you. I'm giving you a broad overview of how to put something together, um, just the basics. All of these commands that I'm showing you have a lot more to them, and I really would encourage you to, to go to LinkedIn Learning and watch some of the videos where they take you deeper into every single command. Um, but I think you'll agree that even with just the basic knowledge, it's pretty easy to throw something together sort of bulletin board style, just dragging and dropping and placing text. Also, check your layers periodically. Um, sometimes it's hard to keep track when you're, when you're doing stuff. So all my text should turn off, and it did. All my pictures should turn off, and they did. All my graphs should turn off, and they did. So my layer control is pretty solid. What if you had something that you brought in on the wrong layer? What if I had... Um, pictures current and I put in my uh, caption here and now all of a sudden it's on the wrong layer how do you fix that very easy to fix that notice take it let's take a closer look at this layer panel you see that the layers that have something on them now have a carrot in front of it I don't have anything on text titles but every other layer has this caret. If I expand a layer, I can look at the sublayer entities. Turns out every single item that's on a layer has its own sublayer associated with it. I advise you to try and not get cut up, caught up in the sublayer organization at this point. Uh, layer is complex enough for 99% of what you're going to do, but know that everything is there. So if this is on the wrong layer and I select it, um, you'll see that the layers uh, palette gives me an indication that it's selected by placing a little blue square next to that radio button. That radio button, by the way, is how you would select everything on a given layer. So I'm selecting just the piece of text. It's on the pictures layer. It should be on the text layer. All you need to do is uh, sort of grab that, you know, drag and drop that little blue square to the correct layer and it's moved. You can see it turned green, which is the color of the bounding box on text, and we'll just text it, uh, test it, make sure it happened. So that's how you that's how you keep layer control, uh, or that's how you move things from one layer to another. Um, what else? Uh, so now that I've got, um, I've got some stuff going on here, I need, I need a caption for, let's do one more caption here. Instead of keeping um, uh, 
using the text command, sometimes it's easy to copy. You know, it's a copy-paste world. And uh, so I'm going to copy this text and put it um, over the map. Um, it's a good idea to get some overlapping going when everything is just like not touching it becomes a little strange so I've got all this blue lake in Chicago this is Montrose Harbor where the missiles used to be it's a great place for a little caption or it might be a great place for a caption I'm sort of improvising this as we go along we'll see now you can use the copy method that you already know control C Windows copy control V Windows paste paste but you'll see it just puts it anywhere in this case not a big deal because I could just scooch it into place but um, one more shortcut for you, and that's in, in um, Creative Cloud. The way we copy things is called Alt-Drag. So I'm dragging this, but then I hold down the Alt key. And that's a very quick and precise way of making a copy. Uh, this black against the blue uh, is a bit of a, a problem. Um, you don't want colors close in value on top of each other like this. So what I'm going to do is reverse print this and, and change that to white. Uh, that's a nice look as well. You, your, your eye doesn't even notice that. It just reads that the text is working. We've seen this many times, right? So if you've got some uh, negative space in an image, uh, that's a good opportunity to use it for a caption. All right, so I would uh, finish my annotation here. And, um, you know, if I was uh, doing a real layout, but I'm just sort of walking you through the steps. Let's make the titles layer current, and I'm going to lay in a big title. And let's see if two inches works, um, what I thought. I'm going to all caps this. And uh, what does two inches look like in um, points? Well, one point is 172nd of an inch. So that should be 144. That should be two inches. Another thing you can do, if you ever want to, you can type in just the value that you want. So I typed in one inch marks and it will convert. So you converted that to 72 points. It knows that that's 72 points to an inch. You can type in um, any value you want and Illustrator will convert it. Um, so 144 points. So that looks that does actually that doesn't look bad. I don't like any of the fonts that I have here. Um, fonts are really important, and that's a kind of a whole. I mean, there's whole classes. If you're taking design, you'd have a whole class on on type, at least one probably. Um, but what I like to do is stay with the fonts that don't call attention to themselves. It's tempting to try something with a lot of character that conveys a lot of expression. Eh. My recommendation, especially when you're starting off, is to um, use neutral typefaces and neutral design concepts so that the elements of your message shine the most. If I have fancy decoration and, and um, color and, and weird you know, icing on this um, work, it gets in the way. So I like, I like fonts that, that just sort of recede into the background. And the one that's maybe most famous for that is Helvetica. It's not something that you will find um, typically loaded on machines, unless you're running a Mac. Uh, that might come with um, Helvetica. Um, but Arial is a pretty close, um, pretty close to Helvetica. And it's a lot easier to come by and come by free. Now this is looking a little large all of a sudden. Um, every font has its own sort of characteristics of spacing and and everything. So I'm gonna uh, send. I'm gonna make this instead of regular. Um, I'm going to use a, a black version of this. So there's a font called Arial Black. Um, let's see if this brings it up. Oh, there it is. There's the black. So now it's maybe a little big. So I'm going to dial down that point file to maybe uh, 1.5 inches. That's a little more what I'm looking for. Now you can read this from across the room, but it's so bold and, and big that I don't think I'm two inches. That was my guess. If it was a shorter title, maybe, but this is long now. Um, so, so I think I'm going to downsize it a little bit. Okay, I've got my title. I've got some uh, explanatory text with my items here. I'm going to make my text layer current again and I'm going to do my capsule description. And my capsule description 
uh, we might say that that is the intermediate size. It's not as big as the title, but it's bigger than the um, bigger than the finest print. So if this is 12, I'm just going to guess, I'm going to make that 14. Um, I, I, I won't know until I print this. It's in the ballpark. I, I do sort of know that. But um, in fact, maybe a little bigger. 16. And um, in fact, maybe a little bigger still. Hmm. That looks about right. Two, three feet away, I can read the caption, what it's about. And I, again, I don't know. And I've done many posters like this. It depends on a lot of things. It depends on the background. It depends on, frankly, what the content is. Um, it depends on uh, what font you use. So Arial is a very legible font. And um, it's good for body text. I also like it for titles because it just looks sort of modernist, mid-century, you know, by today's standards, retro. Uh, but anyway, so here's some of the basics uh, of a layout. And you can see that I'm using the grid. Um, I, could, I could slavishly adhere to the grid a little bit here if I wanted to. Um, it's not right up to the limit, but that's okay because it's, it's um, left justified and um, ragged, uh, ragged right, which is a very, it's the easiest way to set text. You could get into full justification. Uh, that becomes uh, kind of difficult to set, to set text. It'll, it'll make problems for you. Left justified, ragged right is the, is the quickest and easiest way to set text. I don't like the, the relationship here with these two, um, uh, the relationship set up with these two paragraphs of text, so I'm just going to cut that for now. Again, this, my capsule description um, is just meant to uh, briefly explain what the poster is about. And you can you can play with this in different ways. You can go in there, and you know there's lots of things you've you've seen a, a lot of, um, you know, um, you've seen a lot. You're you're all visually very sophisticated. Uh, you've seen things where the first word is larger. Um, lots of ways you can sort of make this um, dress it up. Uh, again, type. Um, I'm not one of these uh, type type maniacs. Um, but I, I know, you know, a, a little about it, and uh, I know enough to avoid mistakes. Let's put it that way. All right, what's missing on here? Well, obviously, a lot of content and a lot of stuff. Oh, I need my um, UIC logo and my team identity. I know this is a team project, so you want to make sure. Maybe you have a logo for the village or the company you're working for, whatever the case may be. So um, let's see. Let's pull up um, the UIC logo at least. So the university provides um, print-ready logos for download. I'm just going to do a Google search for UIC logo. And don't do screenshots here. Go to the actual UIC site, and you can download um, proper logos. Um, it's going to make you log in. That's your regular university login. And we'll, I'm going to go to um, college logos. And uh, let's see, what college are we in again? Urban Planning and Public Affairs. And my college was um, UPP. And um, I'm going to pull up my little logo for um, UDVL. And uh, that's my, um, my own little research unit that I'm a part of within UPP. So um, notice that it's available in lots of different formats. A PNG you may be familiar with, you may not be. That's a that's a picture. That's an image file. Um, notice there's no JPEGs. There's a reason for that. If you ever worked with JPEGs and it comes in and you've got this white rectangle in the back of it and try as you may, you can't get rid of it. It's because the JPEG always has that white rectangle. It doesn't support transparency. PNG does. So if you're working in, a, in an image uh, environment, PNG is the way to go. But for us, we're working in a vector format in Illustrator. And we don't have any pixels to deal with except in the pictures that we bring in. So this EPS is a format you're probably not familiar with. It's uh, encapsulated postscript. It's a, it's a little bit, you don't see it too often these days. Anyway, um, I'm going to use that because 
Illustrator will open that right up and I'm going to use a black version I don't want the logo to take away from my work I want the logo to be on there but I don't I don't want it doesn't matter if it's small because it doesn't pixelate so small is fine I don't want to take red because it's just going to draw um, attention to itself notice that it's going to open right up in Illustrator and this is not going to pixelate there are no pixels here now you know if you zoomed in on any photo file you'd start to see the pixels I'm just going to select everything in this case I'm going to do a Windows copy and then back in my um, put the put this on the text titles layer do a Windows paste into my document it looks like it comes in with these guidelines I'm just going to select those and delete them out and here it is and this will never pixelate because it's vector format um, that's always what um, remember hold down shift um, Illustrator uh, is its native format is vector it never pixelates very different from Photoshop and other image files you might be used to working with you know on any photo you zoom in close enough and you see pixels uh, but these aren't images these are mathematical curves BZ or curves and they will never pixelate so if you have the option to work in that environment um, you, you definitely want 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 to take it if, if I didn't I could use a PNG and make it work that's fine okay um, I need to sort of wrap this up I, I can sort of talk all day about Illustrator as you're probably starting to fear so I need to sort of wrap this up there's a few things um, that I just want to um, show you one of them is this idea of what we can see in any given picture I'm gonna get off the poster for a second and I'm just going to bring in another image and I want to show you this uh, idea of uh, something that Illustrator does called clipping masks and it's kind of a, a cool little um, thing um, that allows you to non-destructively edit a photo here's a photo I can't use this pixelated text but I might like the photo so this was Montrose back in the day um, you'd be out there playing frisbee and then there's this radar installation and we're ready to launch uh, missiles uh, at the, any time we thought the uh, the Russians were were invading uh, people think about terrorism these days as it's such a big threat but we used to actually have missiles stationed on at Montrose and at um, the South Side Point in Hyde Park as well uh, the Cold War was uh, was something else I caught the tail end of it I'm not that old okay so wouldn't it be great if I could just get this picture well you can uh, with something called a clipping mask oh first of all it's on the wrong layer right I want it to be on my pictures layer so I'm gonna select it and just drag it to the right layer I'll test it because I make mistakes all the time yep and it worked so um, I'm going to draw a frame that I wish the photo had and I'm going to give it a stroke I'm going to give it a red stroke and make this bold I didn't have to do this the trick I'm about to show you would work no matter what this looked like it would even work if it had fill it just doesn't matter control Z undo but I want you to see that this is like a picture frame the red rectangle I drew uh, let's say I have to fill a, a different shape right maybe I'll center the guy up a little bit more um, and so what I can do is by using the shape that I wish the photo had I can um, I can crop the photo uh, to that shape using a clipping mask um, so you need three things for a clipping mask one the entity that you're going to mask two the frame that's going to be used to as the mask think of it as like sort of the cookie dough and the cookie cutter and three you set up their relationship so I'm going to select both entities I'm just doing a, a window to select them both and it's so common it's on the right click menu and I'm going to make clipping mask and now what you get is a perfectly cropped photo and you can see as I hover over it you can see the original limits of the photo it's still there it, it hasn't been deleted it's non-destructive editing this is really useful I use this all the time 
um, because you almost never have the perfect shaped photo or the perfect size photo for what you're doing. So with this, you can still make adjustments. So everything is still there. That mask is still there, the path, and the photo is still there. If I double click on this clipping mask relationship thingy, I go into something called isolation mode and it's kind of subtle, but did you see this gray strip up here at the top? And if I were to zoom out, everything else is grayed out now. And this is the only thing I'm editing. This is called isolation mode. In isolation mode, I can go in there and still grab that frame and I can adjust it. Maybe it turns out I needed it to be super narrow. Well, I can adjust that frame and um, not change anything about the relationship and then when I'm done just double click outside of it can also change the photo let's say for whatever reason um, I needed it to be smaller right and you can see that it's only visible within that clipping mask area I'm using my arrow keys now to move it See, I'm moving the photo. You can't see the clipping mask because it doesn't have a path definition. Oh, you can, if you want it for some reason, the border, you could give it a, a definition. Let's say I want a white border on this photo, you know, sort of a effect. I can, I can um, add that back. And I'm done. So that's how we sort of finish off the placement of images. And um, I didn't do that on these other photos, but I certainly can. Um, I just like that photo so much. I'm going to drop it in. I know it doesn't work here, but I just think it's kind of cool. Um, actually, you know what? No, I'm not. This is serious business. So for example here, um, let's say I wanted this to, um, to be more zoomed in, or, or better yet here, because uh, same situation. I want to get rid of this text that's from a book. Uh, that this map was taken from. So with the photo, with the pictures layer current, let's make sure that's the layer it's on, and yes it is, I'm going to draw a um, frame, and this time I'm adhering to the grid. Actually, maybe I want, uh, let's take up the whole grid here. And now you can't see it, but it's there. And I'm going to shift select. And this is a little confusing because you can't quite see it. Maybe if I turn off my guidelines layer, that'll help. And I'm going to make my mask actually visible. So here's the rectangle that I drew. Here's the clipping mask. And you could say, well, I'm not really clipping anything. Well, my plan is to make this image bigger to take up this entire shape. So that's what I'm going to do. So actually, I'll do that first. What if I make this map bigger? I want it to be like an abstract thing. I don't, it's just an effect that I'm going to sort of use. Now I can select that image, shift, select my frame, right click, and make clipping mask. And now I've got this sort of um, map that just communicates something about, you know, this is a, this is the early days of testing. And, um, it shows like where the fallout was from the earliest um, tests in Los Alamos. Um, not sure I entirely like the effect, but you get the idea with the clipping mask. Yeah, this uh, image is pretty well cropped already, um, but if I wanted to, let's say um, maybe this is the only image I have here. I, I need it to be bigger. Um, I can do the same thing again. And it doesn't really matter what we're showing here, although I do like the tip of that missile showing. So I can draw, I'll draw my frame. This time I'm not going to adjust it. I'm just going to draw it. You get the idea what's happening here now, right? And it's black. I don't care. It doesn't matter. It's the trick still works. Select the frame, shift select the entity, right click and make clipping mask. And so that's how you can really, um, oops, look, I'm a little sloppy. So I'm going to double click. Now I'm in isolation mode, select that frame, and just stretch it till it's
right on the guideline double click when you're done and I'm out of isolation mode <clears throat> so now you see how that excuse me how that grid really starts to work last trick that I want to show you is um, and obviously there's a lot this is this is a real rough and crappy poster I'm just demonstrating the concepts here um, yours will be great because you'll spend a lot more time on it um, mine is crappy and loose because I sort of improvised my way through it um, I would probably uh, at this point save this and then maybe do a save as and try something totally different maybe try portrait um, I, I'm, I'm actually liking this more and more um, and I do think that this map with a little bit of explanation might be the type of thing with the title that catches your eye from across the room it's also real data this is I think from the uh, god I forget what what GIS book it's from maybe making maps and it is it is a, a authentic map and with a bit of explanation uh, you know it needs a caption uh, that could work you know it's perfectly valid and that's the type of graphic punch that I'm talking about um, that that the poster has the potential to deliver a um, couple of a uh, couple of uh, caveats maybe and a couple of uh, I'll leave you with a couple of warnings these entities that I placed are not in this file every time I close and open this illustrator it goes and looks for where these images are and reloads them um, that's called a link and um, remember if you never can find a tool it's on the windows pull down so there's a a, a palette for links and uh, this should show all the links that I have in this drawing and it does these are all the things that I've placed depending on the environment you're working in if you're working at home on your own computer it doesn't matter if you're working in a lab computer the tendency is to forget where these were you downloaded them you cut them from Google Earth whatever um, and unless it's part of your illustrator file they can very easily get lost so um, if you want to make them part of your illustrator file you need to embed them just select one or you can select them all and you notice on our context sensitive menu one of the choices we have is to embed and once it's embedded my only choice is to unembed when it's embedded it's part of this file and you're not going to lose it it's always going to be in this illustrator file downside is that your illustrator file starts to become a little large upside is that you're never going to lose the file okay I think I'm really getting close to my half hour limit so I got kind of have to wrap this up um, it wouldn't be an illustrator um, document if it didn't have some drop shadow in it so I'm going to um, first of all center that photo and add a little drop shadow effect to it it's when things are on top of other things uh, sometimes it's nice to have just a touch of drop shadow to separate them so with it selected I'm going to go to the effect pull down stylize drop shadow remember my um, advice anytime there's a preview button use the preview button so it's actually doing it but my values are tiny from the last thing I did let's do something more poster size maybe like a point one for an X offset 0.1 for a Y offset and like a 0.1 for a blur and uh, so this um, you can start to see the drop shadow I'm just going to accept those values and you see how the drop shadow works it just gives it a little bit of a distance off the background and it's nice to sort of emphasize that this is on top of that um, all of a sudden the poster starts to have a little bit of uh, three-dimensionality don't abuse the drop shadow don't um, go crazy with it it gets really tedious again you shouldn't it shouldn't draw attention to itself used sparingly um, it works okay but it shouldn't draw attention to itself okay much much more I'd like to talk about but uh, I think I have to stop there uh, we're running a little long here um, take a step back look at your poster you give it a sort of evaluation uh, there's some things I like about it some things I don't I like how this abstract thing worked out I don't like how it's crowded up here I would adjust that I need a little more um, uh, margins here on my on my text um, your poster may look nothing like this um, it's this is image heavy I know a lot of uh, uh, public administration posters have more processes and more 
uh, quantitative graphics. Um, so this is this is not something that you like. Oh, I'm going to make it look like that. But it's some ideas that are translatable to any style of poster. Um, the way it's set up, um, the idea of um, you know controlling the space, working with the grid. That's something that you can use no matter what your actual assets look like. Obviously, I don't like this miscellaneous white space down here and whatever. I'm very hypercritical of my own work, and I, I see the flaws, as I'm sure you do too. Uh, but not a bad start. I might do a save as and um, rearrange it again, try some different things. Um, anyway, uh, try and have some fun uh, with your work on this. And the last thing I'm gonna do is uh, save this out to a PDF. First, I'm gonna do a file save. And you should be saving your work periodically as you work. Um, all these programs, they, they can be a little crashy. Now to make a PDF out of here, you can use a PDF as a, a printer and go to use the print command uh, to create a PDF. Or you can also do a save a copy and save it to a PDF here. Um, that's the version that I'm going to use. And I'll just, I'll take the default name for right now. And uh, I'm just gonna hit save. And the Illustrator default is fine for most things. If you find your file is getting huge, you can reduce the file size here by going to a smaller, smaller uh, file size. That becomes very low resolution though. What you want to make sure is that you're not loading this up with extra large images every step of the way. So make sure these um, images or graphs or whatever you're putting in aren't larger than they need to be. And then you'll be in pretty good shape um, when it comes time to um, create your PDF. Nobody wants to get a PDF that's uh, 50, 60 meg, right? So uh, you want to make sure that the PDF is, is a reasonable uh, size. All right, let me go grab my PDF, and here it is. And I'll full screen it for you. You can sort of see what it's looking like. Um, okay, that's a pretty good place to start. Um, I'd like to see this full size. So one way to do this, uh, it's hard to get this to a printer, especially these days, and get a full size copy made, although maybe you can do that. Maybe you live close, or maybe that's Maybe that's a possibility for you, but more people have access to an eight and a half by 11 printer, although fewer and fewer people have any printer, admittedly. Um, what you can do, uh, however, is to print this as tiles and tape them together to get a full size 24 by 36. And the way you do that, if you go to file print, uh, you've never probably noticed before, but there's this option for poster here. And you can see what's happening. It's gonna break it down into eight and a half by 11 pages. And, um, uh, you can print it on any printer then. I'm just gonna go ahead and let it let it print that out. Sometimes it takes a minute to flatten. My file's a little bigger than, than I, I'd like it to be. Um, I didn't check the sizes of these images I brought in. Uh, so it might take a moment to flatten. And let's see, it's actually asking me where do I wanna save this. I'll keep the same name and call it tiled. Okay, that took a minute, but here's my PDF, and you can see that what we've got are um, nicely tiled pages. Print this up on 8.5 by 11, pop into a, a FedEx Kinko's maybe, uh, or, uh, you know, it's certainly a lot easier than finding a place to do 24 by 36, if this works for you. And if you look at the um, uh, properties of the file, you can confirm that, yeah, they're eight and a half by 11, uh, 12 pages. So an easy way to get um, a test a test plot. And I really, really recommend doing test plots. Control zero, zoom to extents. Uh, test plots are very important. I never, ever, ever in my life have gone with the first uh, layout as a final product to the printer. Uh, sometimes I only need to see two or three inches coming off the printer and I can cancel it because I know the text is too big, the color's wrong, something's not happening. So if you can, it's it's very important to try and um, uh, do uh, test plots as soon as possible in the process. All right, that's going to wrap it up. I hope this video is not too long to post. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something. And be sure to check out the packet that accompanies this uh, that should be available from your instructor. 
and that's got some of the slides that I showed in the first video as well as some interesting video links by other people that I think are very um, informational and also uh, sometimes entertaining. Uh, it's, it's a few minutes well spent. Um, also some other slides that I didn't get around to that I think are pretty self-explanatory. Uh, some tips, a lot of the information that I talked about basically reiterated in sort of bullet point format. And if you're some random person that just stumbled across this uh, video on YouTube, thanks for watching. And if you want to um, hit me up for that packet and you can find me, I'd be happy to send it to you as well. Thanks and good luck with your project.